Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And just to let you know that I have other podcasts. Some of my main podcasts other than this one are Let Me Bore You to Sleep, which is where I just talk for about an hour or so about nothing. And they're they're pretty much daily. The other one is Whisper Hypnosis. What is it? (laughs) I've forgotten the name of it. Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. So they last about 20 to 30 minutes each. And it's just me whispering and they're uh, fairly popular for sleeping. And the other one is my sleep hypnosis weekly. And it's usually 30 minutes plus, sometimes longer, 40, 50 minutes. And I do two versions, one with music, one without. So this is going to be another one of my little exercises, but I'm not going to talk for an hour. I promise. I say that now, I might do, but I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try and stick to just doing the exercise. It's just an idea that you might want to try. And it's going to be a short one because it's going to be something that you can do in your own time as well. In In your own time. Well, my teacher, do that in your own time, Tommy. So, basically, there's two there's two sides to this uh, little exercise that I thought about. Now, I don't know if you're able to do this in the moment as I ask. So it might be a case of pressing the pause button and thinking about something. But I want you to think about something that's really funny. Now, I understand that you may be listening to this and you might not be in that kind of a mood. You know, you might be listening because you're feeling miserable or you're feeling anxious or stressful. Um, And I understand that this is what this podcast is for, is to help people like yourselves, like myself, to help to reduce the stress levels and to to deal and cope with difficult times. So this is an exercise, this is a technique, whatever you want to call it, to help to reduce anxiety. It also takes a little bit of thought as well, a little bit of stepping out of that feeling. Because... If you were completely in that feeling, you wouldn't be able to listen to this. So the fact that you can listen to my voice, you can press the play button, search for the podcast, whatever, and you can listen to my voice and focus on my voice means that you do have the availability to think about other stuff other than the stressful stuff or the anxiety stuff so there is I don't want to use the word split but there is definitely um, different categories being used within your brain at this moment so your brain isn't just one thing if you think about it there's so much unconscious stuff going on like your heart blood pumping around your body healing continuously happening in your body the growing, you're always growing, aren't you? My like hair's growing, fingernails growing. I'm continuously getting taller. I'm nearly nine foot now. I was only eight foot four when I started the recording. So continuously things are happening in our body. Continuously, you know, the liver, kidneys, lungs, all that stuff's just happening automatically without any need from us. So there is always room in your mind for other stuff. 
it doesn't, you know, we, sometimes we might say to ourselves, oh, it's all I'm thinking about. And it's not. It's, it's, it's all my brain can do is think about that. It's not true. It might feel that way, but actually your brain is way... I don't think we always give ourselves enough credit. I'm not going to go on about how we use a certain percentage of our brains, and I don't even know how true that all, all that stuff is. But you are capable, and I am capable of way more than we realise. And you know that. We all, we all know it really, don't we? But we don't always maybe acknowledge it. So there's more to us than a feeling. Regardless of how strong that feeling may be, or may have been before you press the play button, it's, it's not all there is. And... I'd like you to think, and it's going to be a bit weird, but I want you to think of something that's really funny. And it can be a joke that you've heard in the past. It can be a situation. It can be a really rude joke. Something that's very out of, out of order, you know. It could be un-PC. It, could be, it can be something that you would never say to anyone else. But it just makes you giggle, makes you inside, it makes you laugh. And there's no judgment. No one's going to know what you're thinking. And, you know, for, from my perspective, I think everything is fair game for humour. As far as if it's in your own head, it doesn't matter what it is. If, it's, if it makes you laugh, it makes you laugh. Um, you know, so for this situation, there is no judgment. It's about finding something that just cracks you up, that just makes you laugh and just, um, you know, it's been a couple of things over the years for me. There's one, and this is really silly. It's not so funny now, but it was really funny at the time where I was working with someone and they, they went off to, to the toilet and I was just waiting for them to come back so I had a job that took two of us to do the job and his name was Terry and he came back in and I said have you seen Andre who was our boss who Andre my ferret's named after because he was my friend and I said have you seen Andre He's, and Terry said yeah I just passed him in the toilet Now I, he meant he just walked past him. I just had the image of Terry pooing him out into the toilet. And I couldn't stop laughing. And it, I just couldn't, honestly could not stop laughing. And he was annoyed with me because I didn't stop laughing. And he couldn't really see the funny side to it. I just really found it hilarious. Now, if you've got, something like that in your memory something that was just so ridiculous and that you just couldn't stop laughing about and you think about it sometimes you just laugh like, I can't believe that happened it could it could be a visual of someone um thought you know sitting on a chair and the chair collapses or uh, it could be anything ridiculous you know just someone spilling a drink or, I mean, this this wasn't even funny, but it was funny at the time, but I was at a funeral. And that's not the joke. I was at a funeral. After the funeral, a lady came up to my aunt and said, how are you, Kathy? It was Kathy's funeral. It was my aunt. She said it to the wrong aunt. She, it's like she didn't even know whose funeral she was at. And I, and I laughed another time. Just these are a few little memories that uh, we were watching a TV film, a, a film on TV, and there was a, it's called Shirley Valentine, and I think it was like Boxing Day. I was probably about 21 at the time, 20, 21. 
and the whole family was there, my nan and my dad and, you know, and we were just watching this film. I think my aunt was there. And at one point in the film, it said, uh, what you need to do is get some stimul, get your, get some, get your clitoris stimulated or something like that. It was just a, a, a phrase in, in the film. <clears throat> and my nan said very loudly, what's a clitoris? I mean, genuinely, she said that. I spat out my, my drink, which is weird because I didn't even have a drink. I don't know where it came from. And so I left the room and I had to go into the garden and I was howling with laughter because on so many different levels, it was just weird to hear my grandmother who was, uh, she must have been, yeah, 80, at least 80 then. And also the fact that she had five children so she must have known something about the human body and and also saying it in front of her family and her kids as well. And it just and she seemed like she genuinely didn't, you know. And I just found it hilarious. So that those kind of things <laughs> as I think of that, although it's not like making me laugh so much, it gives me a, a weird a feeling of a different feeling in my body. So that's all I want you to do is if you need to pause the recording to think of something, or you can think of a few things, maybe write them down to remind you. And what I like to do is shake that off, shake that off and focus on the, the stuff that's that feeling you had before, that feeling of anxiety or stress. Notice what level it is, zero to ten, you know, the, you know, the drill, zero, nothing, ten, um, being high, it's ten, uh, zero being like zero, you know, nothing at all. And so focusing on that feeling, noticing what it is, and perhaps we should have done this right at the beginning before I started blabbing on, but. Now think of that thing. So you got that feeling. Now think of one of those events from the past that was just really funny. It doesn't have to be an event from your past. It could be something funny from a movie. Um, you know, some of my favourite bits are from Airplane or Life of Brian. Or there's one bit with, uh, I think it's Who's Bob with, uh, I forget his name, but He's basically the lead character's asleep, and his psychiatrist. He's he's, he's staying with a psychiatrist at their holiday home, and a psychiatrist is trying to wake him up because he's his patient. But he's trying to wake him up, and he's doing everything. He's blowing a horn, playing a trumpet, everything, uh, cymbals, drums, to try and wake Bob up. Nothing, and then Bob like. <laughs> Bob's alarm clock goes off and he just wakes up straight away. Now that is one of the funniest bits. I, I realise I don't do it much justice. And another movie bit was Gene Wilder in a film. It wasn't one of his most famous films, but he was there and a, a woman kisses him on the lips and he, he rubs his lips, screams and runs off. <laughs> and again that's those bits I had to actually stop the movie because I'm laughing so much again it's visual stuff that's visual stuff so I might have done, not done it very much justice at all by explaining it or describing it so there's going to be things bits that you've liked in films that you found hilarious that maybe if you don't think about it very often. Uh, so, or it just might be a joke. It might be something that a friend said to you. 
Anyway, if, if you think of something, just, again, if you do need to pause the recording in order to think of something, but when you thought about something, then I'd just like you to just think about that. And because you know you can separate in your mind, you've got that feeling on one side, the anxiety, stress feeling. On the other side, you've got this feeling, uh, the comedy, the memory of laughter. And even if you, even if you're not maybe able to get in touch with that feeling itself, you can remember the laughter, remember the, the memory of it. Just, even if it's vague, it doesn't matter because it has feelings connected to it. And there's a different energy different energy to it and you can imagine so you've got you've got the let's say you you can put your hands out in front of you the left hand and the right hand so you've got I don't know why I'm mentioning that there's two hands and one's left one's right and of course if you're unable to do it for whatever reason you can imagine doing it in your head and so you've got your left hand and your right hand your left hand, you've got the anxiety and the stress and that feeling that's there that may, you know, may well have changed since you've been listening to me. But it was there you know, before you decided to listen to my voice and uh, change the way you feel. So you've got on the right hand, the other hand, you've got the, the laughter, the memory of the laughter, the memory of the, the humour, uh, whatever it might be. It's going to be different for you than from anyone else because you've got your own experiences, your own memories, the own different things that you find funny and that's what makes us all unique and interesting. So you've got that in the right hand and you've got the other stuff. And so I just want you to gauge what level on your left hand, what level that is of anxiety and stress and what it is different from before the last time you kind of noticed the level from 10 down to zero. And maybe it's changed, maybe it's gone down a little bit, maybe it's gone down a lot, maybe it's still the same, maybe it's, you know, whatever it is. So just notice what it is now. 10 being the top, zero being nothing. And just notice what number you'd give it now. And what I'm going to ask you to do is, when you're ready, you want to count, I want to count down from one to three. When I say three, I'd like you just to push your hands together. That's it. So I'm going to count from one, focusing on the left hand, really getting in touch with that feeling and really getting in touch with the right hand feeling as well that feeling, and realizing that you can have both feelings. You know, your your brain is way more, has way more ability and flexibility than, than perhaps you normally give credit to yourself. Two, again, noticing, maybe there's a different, a difference in the feeling. Maybe the right hand, because it's you know, it's kind of something that we're focusing on, and it's sort of growing, and it's, there's more there, and it's, that's less on the left hand, and it's the anxiety and stress has, hasn't got the power that maybe you thought it did have initially, as you've been focusing and listening to me uh, talking, and becoming more aware of the feelings of the laughter and the humour, the comedy and whatever it might be from the past or even now in your right hand. And when I get to number three, I'm going to ask you to just push your hands together. That's it. Three. Now push your hands together and just rub them together. Just do it enough so your hands get nice and warm. 
and then just move your hands around a bit like you're washing your hands you know like we all see on the television must wash your hands don't forget to do it between your fingers and between your finger and thumb so imagine you just and i'm still doing it you just washing your hands but there's no soap there, there's no water there it's just unless of course you actually are standing at a sink which would be it's fine if that's what you're doing that's sad if that's how you listen to recordings and then just keep doing it focusing on your hands noticing that when you do this apart from the fact that it feels quite nice because it stimulates the nerve endings in your fingers and because you're doing it gently and sort of brings the blood to your hands so you know brings that healing to your hands but also it almost feels like even though you know you've got a right hand and a left hand they feel very connected like really connected and you know you can take them apart at any time and they're not stuck together or anything like that but they do feel like they are as one even though they're moving around and your right thumb is in a different direction to your left thumb but you can feel that connection i mean they are connected they're part of your body they're part they're attached to you but it's that connection and there's a real it's that sense of intimacy as well where something that perhaps we don't do enough of is holding our own hands because let's face it we really should be our own best friend we're the only person that we spend every second of every day from the moment we're born with it's only us we're with ourselves every second of our life so why not hold your own hand and just just feels nice there's a comfort there's a safety in that it might sound weird might be a little bit slushy but it feels nice actually i quite like it so i'm not rubbing my hands together as much it's more just gently stroking the palms with the fingers and and then stroking the backs of your hands from your um from your wrists all the way down your fingers the backs of your fingers and then do it with the other hand just gently stroking your your fingertips down across your hands and across the back of your fingers and then do the same with the backs of your fingers your nails and just going to and stroking across the palms of your hands from your wrists down to you down your fingers and then as you put your hands together gently moving them and it might be might sound a bit weird but if you put your hands together you can actually move your arms around a little bit really gently but really gently and only do it if it's physically safe and okay for you to do and you're not pushing your hands together with any kind of strength or pressure they're just together and you can just move them around a little bit and those muscles in your body your upper body you can feel that they're relaxed in your legs your arms your face every part is relaxed maybe apart from your shoulders because you're using your shoulders and maybe some of your arm power energy to lift your hands so that's the only part maybe part of your chest or your upper back it's still relaxed but you know it's being used so it's not as relaxed as the rest of your body and to just drop your hands 
either to your knees or wherever to the sides of your chair. And just allow the shoulders to relax. And it feels nice. It feels quite tiring, actually. Not tiring, but feel very tired. But in a... Not in a tired that I need to go to sleep, but a tired that I feel rested. I feel... Yeah... And all I can feel now is just relaxation. There is nothing else. It's just calmness. Calmness relaxed in my body, but also in my mind. Relaxed in your body and also in your mind. And that, that's all there is to it, really. I hope that this has been useful to you. Please let me know how you get on. I'd love to hear from you. You can go to my website, leave a review on the review page if you choose. And yeah, I feel really quite chilled out actually. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. I'll see you next time. Lots of love. Bye.